no, no. Fred picked it. <laughs> Sorry. Why, you don't like that song? I like that song. I mean, I, I can hear a few seconds, but if I'm going to listen to a lot of a song, let me hear something really good. Richie, you like that song more than Which a one? feeling? More than a feeling? Boston or no? No good? I do. I used to like Boston a lot, man. Yeah. Robin doesn't like them. <laughs> Come on, Robin. And not the, a whole song's worth. <laughs> I was watching you rehearse, and I was like, why am I listening to Boston? I'd rather hear the rehearsal, actually. <laughs> That's right. Richie Sambora, you know him from Bon Jovi, of course. I always thought that was weird that John's name got to be the band anyway. It could have just know, as easily been Sambora. <laughs> Sambora is a good name yeah, for a band. Yeah, you know what happened when we were kids? It's like we really tried to find a name. Right. A different name. Right. And we couldn't. Yeah. And John, I mean, we really tried for like months, man, and they all sucked. Did, did, did anyone ever say Sambora? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, they didn't, man. But hey, you know, Howard. Yeah. By the way, you look ask very. You, you look know very the great handsome. thing of do, uh, the great thing about making a solo record. Yes. You can actually name the band anything you want. And what did you name? So the I, band? Got, I got. We're just kind of rolling with a few names here. Sambora. The, no, the first name was the disgusting rabbis. Oh, I love that. I want you to I help. You got that. any ideas? I, that's it. Disgusting rabbis is that's an unbelievable one. name. How about, uh, what's the other one here? We have um, Satan Castro and the Exiles. Oh, uh, I like I, that one. No, I don't like it. How about Satan Castro and the Exiles? What are you about talking about? Bon Giovi. <laughs> <laughs> how about the Katy Perry Dancers? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Richie Sambor and the Katy Perry Dancers. I like that. Uh, what else we got? We got um, the Fine Coxman. Oh, that's a good one, too. You know what? You're not bad with these names. We got... So, let's see. So choose one now so I can know what to call I them. I don't man. know. What do you think? What I else gotta, you got? How about Dick and the Cocktails? No, I don't like no? that. No? That's right. How about I Fuck Denise Richards? Mm. My man. <laughs> Steady. I, are you done with her? Wait, wait. Are you, I, got, I got a million questions for you. All right. No problem. That's cool. Go ahead. <laughs> no problem, buddy. Like I don't hear Howard enough of my topic. cans. Can you turn them up? You, and Robin, you, too, please. Uh, give, give, that, give him a little juice. Scott, yeah, I need more juice. You know what I'm saying? They're doing it back because you just stare at Richie like like nothing's happening. Uh, Are they listening back there, Scott? So, yeah. Richie, is it true you still take guitar lessons and and, and vocal lessons? Yes, you, I do. Yeah, that's that's an amazing dedication because uh, I happen to think you're one of the best guitar players. You oh, really are a tremendous you, guitar, and I think you're underrated. Are you not? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. In some places I am, and in some places I'm not. You know, when they make does he lists, make those lists? Yeah, when they make lists of some of the greatest guitar players of all time, they leave you off the list. And yet, I've seen you play, and I and I know the music. Why are you left off of those lists? You know, I think it's a part of you know in Bon Jovi, I don't get a chance to actually work out a lot. Right. So, at that, in essence, you know, when you make a solo record like this, right, man, I got to tell you something. I want you to listen to the record because I think you're really going to like it. There's a, it's a, I get to wind out a lot more. You know what I, I felt in rock music? There's not a lot of jamming going on. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So I, I got a bunch of great musicians with me. Yeah. I'll and I don't have my electric guys. here today, but right. Um, on the record, you'll find. A lot of great songs, and me, I get to be a vocalist again, which is always cool. You were you started out as a vocalist. Yeah, Vo yeah. I every was a, band you were ever in, you were a vocalist. I was a lead singer, yeah. And then when you hooked up with Bon Jovi, which I don't even remember how the hell you met John and all that, but we'll go into that. But when you hooked up with him, suddenly you're not the lead singer. And that's a, what is that a blow to you? Is that a blow to your ego, or do you do you because you can get lost back there, right? Nah, not at all. You know the thing with me is I was always a working musician, musician, you know, right. and I never took it for granted. And uh, I was trying to get a, a leg up in this business any way I could. Right. So you know, I mean, what hey, convinced if you? If I'm though? just going to be like a primary songwriter and the guitar player in a great band. Hey, man, if I'm going to make it that way, that's going to be a good deal. And but obviously it paid off in space. But what convinced you? How old were you when you made the decision, okay, I'll let this guy be the lead singer? Oh, yeah. When I first got in a band, I was 23. 23? Yeah, 23. Up until then, you had been in other bands, and mm -hmm. you were the guy. You were the front man. Yeah. So what? What? why did you make the decision all of a sudden to hook up with John and let him be the front man? Well, you know, like I said, I was just joining bands upon bands upon bands. Actually, when I met John, I had already had two record deals. Right. I was on uh, Led Zeppelin's label, Swan Song. Right. In a failed record deal there. And then I was on Capricorn Records with a guy by the name of Duke Williams and the Extremes. 
Was that a was that a solo deal, or you had in other words, you had a whole band that? Yeah, there was a band, and I was an extreme in that band, so I wasn't the front man in that band particularly. But all the other club bands I was in, and all that stuff, you know what I mean? When you were a young guy in Swan Song, which was Led Zeppelin's label, I remember that level. It was the coolest label ever. Even look cool. Oh yeah. When they sign you, do you think that's it? I am now going to make it. I am going to be famous. Absolutely. And then when it doesn't happen, is that the biggest blow in the world to your head? Absolutely. But you got to keep on going. It's like. I made three records before I started my own independent label before I met John. Did you graduate high school? Yes, I did. You did? Did you go to college? I was in college, yeah. I went through two years of college. Where did you go to college? Keene College. And when you were in Keene College, you knew you wanted to be a musician? Oh, I knew I wanted to be a musician all along. Did your parents tell you, don't do this? this No, you know, they were very supportive. And and you were a guy who sat in his room and practiced guitar every day? Yeah, you know, I'm a self-taught guy. So the only way you can teach yourself a, a, a guitar is actually to bump into your own mistakes. How do you teach yourself the guitar? I, I mean, do you listen to records and play along with them? Exactly. And and you became, emulate your heroes. Do you think that you're a genius in that you taught yourself how to play guitar? I mean, to, to me, that would seem impossible to get to the level you're at to do that yourself. You know, I, I you know I, I always had a, a ear for music, and I kind of learned backwards because I kind of could play by ear. Yeah. And then I kind of went to theory classes and stuff like that and actually learned the musical end of it. Were you popular in high school? I would imagine you were. Yeah, I was. Were I was a athlete? jock, and I was in bands, and oh, I was no go- you know, oh, going to goodness. different towns. You were, what were you, a football player? Uh, no, I was a basketball player, baseball player. I played a little football, but it was, I was getting my hand caught between helmets and ribs broken, and I would hell with that shit. And uh, when a guy is as good looking as you, you're popular and you play guitar, you getting laid at 12? Or I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, man, it was pretty good, man. It was, Women right? like musicians, let's face it. Were you getting laid at a very young age? Not really. 16, 17? 17, yeah. 17 that's years old. That's pretty young, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. I bet you nailed a teacher or two, didn't you? <laughs> did you ever nail a teacher? <laughs> no, did. I didn't. You didn't? Didn't have a teacher. What's wrong like, with you? I had friends that had some teachers. Right. Really? And, and so you go to high school, and by high school, you're hooking up in bands, and you were signed to Swan Song by the time you were what age? I was like 19 and a half. Unbelievable. I yeah, I was playing, you know what? I was playing in New York. Uh, you know, four or five times a week, I was doing Great Gildersleeves, CBGBs, privates, places like that were really happening in the city. You know, in a way, you were blessed. I mean, th- th- most guys struggle a little more than than even what you're talking about. I mean, the fact that you got signed so young to a label. Yeah, but you know what? The record never came out, man. Zeppelin oh. blew up, oh. and that whole label, you know, just took a shit basically. And the record that you produced with this with with Swan Song never came. Never out. came out. Yeah, that had to break your heart. Yeah, totally. I mean, I thought, here we go. We're going to the big time. Here it is, you know? Do you have that record somewhere? Do you have it? It's somewhere, yeah. Actually, um, after I made it with Bon Jovi, my lead singer, you know, was going through a bit of a hard time. He said, can I release it? And he needed the bread, so I just relinquished everything to him, and he just took the money. Oh, that was nice. Well, what the, you know. And, and, and you felt, hey, now that I'm in Bon Jovi, it's okay to release that? Weren't you nervous that people would compare that record to Bon Jovi? I was a kid, man. You didn't care? I didn't care at all. So, so if you were having a lot of successes uh, before Bon Jovi, what made you join up with John? Did you think that he was an extraordinary singer and he could do a better job singing than you could? Well, no. You know what? I went to see him play at a club called the Fountain Casino. Remember that place? No. Right, it was right I, up the street I, I from the Club Benet where you used to play. Right. Where I used to come see you play. Oh right. No. God. Yeah, you used to play with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah you right. called me up a bunch of times. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and I went and I saw him. And my bass player, Alec John Such, was actually playing with me at the time, and he was moonlighting with Johnny. Right. Because I, I got asked to join KISS, and I flew out to L.A. You did? Yeah. W- w- wait a second. When did that happen? 83? 83. This is before Bon Jovi. Yeah. Those guys had heard your solo stuff. I guess somebody, you know, hipped them to me, and they were interested in having me come out, so I went to California for the first time. Yeah. And uh, I ended up staying out there for two weeks and having a blast. I can't, wait, wait a second. So how old are you at that point? Uh, at that point, I'm about 22. 22, 22 years old. Kiss calls you. Was Kiss already successful? Oh, big time. Big time. 
And and so they. Yeah, needed... I was going to replace Ace when they did, they were looking for a guy. And, and so th- did you get into the makeup and? Uh... No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, you know what? I, honestly, you know, I respect Kiss a lot, but my music was more into a more blues orientated kind of thing, more right. organic. I was into like Zeppelin and Hendrix and right. You know, guys that played guitar and actually emoted through the instrument. So when they called you and said join the band, were you open to it or did you already? Look, say... I, like I said, I was searching to get a leg up, and I was in like five. Five bands at the same time. But how could you turn down Kiss? Here's a band that's making a ton of money. You hadn't really broken through. I, I imagine you didn't have a lot of money at that point. Oh, definitely not. When you turned down, you turned down Kiss. Well, basically, I walked into the edition, and they were looking for a guy to like worship them. Yeah, and I didn't. That's Gene. I just wasn't that guy. You know right, what I mean? Right. So I'm so like, you didn't get come on, let's jam, part. let's do yeah. something. And they right. want to do like, you know, you better know Black Diamond. I go, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, ah, can we just play so you guys can get a sense of what I'm doing? Because I'm sure I can play your music. You know? Right. And so did you? They have... got upset. You're kidding. Yeah, they got, they yeah, got a little that, upset. That seems very professional to me to say, let's see if we can bond here. Let's see. If yeah, we they can... got a little upset, but it was really funny because like fast forward a little bit. Yeah. Our first tour in Europe, we opened up for Kiss. Yeah. And we laughed about it a lot. <laughs> yeah. You know? So you went there for two weeks. Gene, I guess, is the big ego. Who you're not? You're not sucking his balls enough. You're just being a, a you. You're being rich. <laughs> no, they, you know what? They were both pretty cool to me, but I think they were like taken aback that I wasn't like so into them. You know, like I was just like. But to, to think about that in your life, let's say Bon Jovi had never worked out, you would have been kicking yourself in the head the rest of your life because joining Kiss would have made you a multimillionaire. I mean, what you are now, and it all worked out. But it does take a lot of balls. To turn down a band like Kiss and not sit there and suck their ass a little bit and get in the band <laughs> you know what, and Howard? make a fortune. It didn't seem authentic to me for wow. some reason. That's beautiful. But it's true, though. I, I love that it just about didn't you. seem authentic to me, man. I was like, as an artist, I was moving in a different direction already. Yeah, wouldn't it have killed you to play music that you really didn't care about? You know, all the guys in your band right now look at you like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> they even take the kiss job. <laughs> they take the kiss job in two seconds. <laughs> like, man, you must be fucking maniac or something. <laughs> Let me at those balls. So when you go out to, 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 it was on Kiss's dime, you go out there for two, what, two weeks? Well, you know what happened? I was actually, uh, I used to be uh, uh, jamming with uh, Still Esther's own brother's Frank. Oh, Who? Who Sylvester you know Stone's that? brother, no kidding. Frank. I used to like play with him every. So I was actually <laughs> staying. At Frank's? I was like at Sly's house actually. Wow. You know, and he wasn't there. Right. He Perfect. might not even know that, so he's going to kick my ass when he hears about this. <laughs> so do you tell girls, "Hey, this is my place. Why don't you?" Come yeah, right. Over? I took his pictures down and put mine up. <laughs> And yeah. so you went out. But yeah, no, I was having a good time with some California girls out there, and I decided I picked up a couple of sessions. Right. So I decided to stay out there for a couple of weeks. Right. When you say you picked up a couple of sessions, you mean you were a session musician. You would go out there, and people would pay you to sit in with a band yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Guys I knew, you know, kind of hooked me up with some people, and I was lucky enough to stay out there, make a little bit of money so I could actually stay out there and get home. So when do you start taking guitar lessons? When you were in Bon Jovi? No, I was, uh, I, my first guitar lesson was actually, I was 52 years old. No kidding. And who can really teach you? I mean, you've, it, there's a teacher say to you, uh, look, Richie, what, what can I really teach you? You're you holding are... your hands the wrong No, check this out. Why would they a, fuck with what you do? I, wa- I walked into this, uh, my favorite vintage guitar stop, car, guitar shop in California, and I, this guy was playing with his back towards me, and he's playing acoustic guitar, right. but he sounds like two guys. What was he playing? Tell me what he was playing at I, that point. Just some piece, you okay. know, this acoustic piece. Right. But he sounded like two guys playing at the same time. Right. So I kind of walked around in front of him. I said, what are you doing, man? Yeah. you got to teach me how to do this. This is, like, sick. You know, I said, I'll be back in 18 months. I'm going on tour. <laughs> but <Right. laughs> when I come back... I'd love you to teach me. So he gave me his number. He happened to be a cat by the name of Lawrence Juber, who used to be in McCartney oh, and Wings. Right. But he was also now the, like, the acoustic guitar player of the year. Right. And he was working with all these different alternative tunings. So I started to work on him with those. So, uh, you know, now there's always more you could learn. That's the great thing about me. He wasn't opposed to teaching you and giving you his secrets, so to speak? No, not at all. Because I, I think it was more of a give and take. I also was teaching him a little bit. Right. And he was teaching me. When but honestly, it, it was enough. something that was alien to me and I never did before. But when you say guitar lesson, you have to pay him to teach you, right? Sure. Yeah. So wh- what does the guy charge Richard charged? Sambora for a guitar lesson? I mean, you know, I, Howard, if I, I don't see even, you, you know, I, I don't even look. So it doesn't matter. I like this. Sign yeah, check, be, you know. uh, Mr. Sambora, that'll be 50 grand. For yeah, no. Lesson. <laughs> it ain't like that, you know. He's, right. he's a good guy. So when you got into Bon Jovi, suddenly it's a 
a new world for you. You're mm-hmm. not the front man. You're not the lead singer. So now that you have an album out where you're singing lead, yeah. it feels good to you, right? You can show people what you can do. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a whole different energy. You know, I give good band. Right. You know? And uh, I always was a team player. Is this like a band what I'm looking at? Are these guys in your band? Yeah, these are the guys are the guys I made the record with and in my band, yeah. Oh, no kidding. So in other words, this is not something where you just hired some musicians for the day where they're going to play with you. No, you know, the excellent thing about this record, mm-hmm. it happens so organically. And from the writing process up, and when we took it in the studio, yeah. we sounded like a band immediately. Right. And we just started to roll. And that's why I left all the jamming pieces on this record. You know, because, I mean, now people can get a chance to hear. I mean, like, you know, when we were kids, we were growing up with Zeppelin and Hendrix, and they were jamming on records. Right. So people would get to hear me play extended guitar solos. Did you go to John and say, I'm doing a solo album, and uh, did you say to the rest of the Bon Jovi band, look, I'm going to go do this thing? Do you have to get permission, in a sense? No, I, you just got to tell them, you know. We've always been supportive of our individual endeavors, you know. What is going on with Bon Jovi? Are they together? Dude. Not, I've been a busy boy this year. Check this out. Right. At the end of this record, I started writing with John for the new Bon Jovi record. The new Bon Jovi record's done. Oh, it's all finished. It's all finished because now I'm going on tour for the next three months. With Bon Jovi? No, with, with this, this band. record. Yeah, Richie Sambora band. And, and, uh, and so... And the Disgusting Rabbis. When you... The, I love that name, by the way. Well, when you... Cock do, and the Doodle Doos, man. Is it hard for you to go on tour now with a new band because you're not playing to stadiums, you're not playing to bigger crowds like that, you have to play to guys, you know, the, you're starting in out in a sense, right? Yeah. No, you know, I'm playing great theaters, man. You are? All over the world. We put the show on sale actually before the record came out in Europe. Right. And the tour sold out the first day in pre sale. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. So, but but it's not a stadium set up like when you play. Bon no, Jovi. we're just playing cool theaters. But you enjoy that. Absolutely. No, that's great. You know, I mean, I don't take anything for granted. I mean, obviously, every time you walk out in front of a stadium stage, yeah. I mean, it blows your mind. I don't care no matter how many times you do it. If you take it for granted, you'd be an asshole. Let's face it. Do you think you uh, are blessed? I mean, like like live a charmed life. I mean, ever, starting from high school, being an athlete, being able to play guitar, teaching yourself how to play guitar at a young age, getting into a super mega hit band like Bon Jovi. Absolutely, it's it's re- it's a blessed and life. And then right? all the women. And then oh yeah, I mean my God. <laughs> oh, you know, it, like I mean, it's funny. You go, you know, I'm a kid from Woodbridge, New Jersey. Right. And yesterday I went to see the Giants. I took the guys to see the Giants, and we walk in Giant Stadium, and I'm looking around. I'm going. Man, I sold this mofo out like four times. Right. It still blows your mind. It's right? heavy. You know, it's heavy. You know, it's like it's like guys like us, like me and you. You know, we actually did it. Right. It's pretty amazing when you've accomplished that. You sometimes like you pinch yourself because you know how many musicians who are great, like that guy from Wings who's teaching you, who haven't been able to break through right. and make it in the business. There's... That and it factor. And isn't it almost defeating to put out an album now because of the way the music business is? It's almost impossible to sell records because every all music is exchanged for free almost. You're not going to make a lot of money with this record. Oh, absolutely not. It's right. not. I, I didn't do this for the money. You know, I mean, as a as an artist, you got to kind of you got to keep fresh. You got to do these things. So basically, it's like you ex- excavate inside and bring out all this stuff. And this record is about a lot of my life experience. And how do you? But how do you uh, decide which which song is going to go on a Bon Jovi album? Which is going to be a solo? Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, there's not even any choice. When I write a record for myself. I'm the mouthpiece. I'll write a different lyric than John's ever going to sing. Is it nice to be able to write a song on your own without John's interference? I mean, uh, I'm sure... Is that what you call it? What is the process when you and John write a song? It's very, very simple. We sit down with an acoustic guitar and a piano and our two voices. We have a conversation about how we're feeling. You you know, there's a big, big commonality between John and I. We grew up Do you like each other? Oh yeah, absolutely. Be honest. I'm being honest. I feel you don't. I feel like when the when the when the, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Richie. No, you I've known you guys Howard? for a while. We really I, do. It's an anomaly, really. It is. We get along. We've always got along. You know, there was a little wonky period in the beginning of the '90s because we were, you know, everybody experiences fame and fortune right at different speeds. Yes. And you know, you add a little bit of lifestyle in there, right? Which I was working pretty good, you know. Right. Uh, it gets confused, and then, you know, we had to kind of put Humpty Dumpty back together. What do you specifically together. mean? What happened? Was it, was it because you got you got into trouble with drinking and stuff? And some of, and some of your uh, new album deals with what some of your problems oh, absolutely. were, right? Like, you don't uh, make a secret about oh, it. Oh, no. You know, I think, you know, I set out to make an authentic record. Right. You know, because I believe there's this stigma, obviously, that, you know, people go, rock star, 
Bon Jovi. They're going to think Richie's, you know, that kind of person. Right. And for that's show business, man. Yeah. You know, this record was an artistic record where I decided, you know, it's like when you did your movie. Yes. You know, you put all your stuff out there. Right. To people, man. And it felt good to you, right? Yes. And you know what? Now, with my record, that's exactly what I'm doing. I mean, you wouldn't be the first rock star to have a problem with booze. I mean, uh, everybody uh, seems to go through some sort of drug-related thing, except for John, right? You know, yeah. You know what? It's funny, because I started out playing clubs when I was like 16 and a half. Right. And back then, it wasn't frowned upon. What, to drink? No, it was encouraged. Yeah, it was like an accoutrement of my business. Right. You know what I mean? So then, all of a sudden, but I'll tell you what, it took me about 35 years for my demons to catch up with me. So I'm a pretty resilient little bastard. I never saw you as a guy who drank a lot and stuff, so you probably drank in private, right? You know what? After a while, what happened was, yeah, I was definitely a, a kind of a guy that always drank in my house never drank i I didn't even drink in restaurants anymore wow or i didn't drink around the band or anywhere near a performance that's when you know you have a problem when you're drinking by yourself right when it's not a social thing i guess so what were you drinking wine yeah i was drinking wine and you know what it was predominantly a stress reliever right absolutely that's i mean i was using it for a specific different reason so when did you realize you had a problem you had to go into rehab when did you realize you know it was about five years ago you said, hey, I'm doing this too much, and I'm doing it every night. Yeah, when I started getting clean, it was about five years ago. But I was doing it every night for about 30 years. So, Did you, know. you have interventions? Did anybody, you know, did the group get together and say, look, Richie? Yeah, a lot of people kind of said, hey, man, you know. But also what happened, I had broken my arm. Right. And I was doing painkillers because, check this uh, out. So I break my arm in my house. <laughs> I get divorced. Drinking. Right? You got it from Heather. Yeah, I got divorced from Heather. Right. Right? So I come home from one leg of the tour. I get into this new house. I'd never been there before. My sister-in-law thinks she's doing me a solid. She puts this shitty bed, bath, and beyond mat in the bathroom. Right. I wake up to take a piss one morning, and I just went, biffed. <laughs> and I, my shoulder went right into the jacuzzi, and oh. I broke my arm in three places. Oh, my God. Two weeks later, I have to play like 24 stadiums. With a broken arm? With a broken arm. Wow. So I hired all these sports docs, therapists, this, that, and the other thing. I said... There was $145 million on the table for this tour. Right. I said, I wasn't going to leave it out there. Whatever I had to do, I was going to do it. So the painkillers got in there, too. Now, now, are you wearing a cast while you're... You can. It's a shoulder. Oh, it's a shoulder. Right. You can't really do can't anything for that. So these guys teach you how to sort of hold the guitar so you don't completely Well, you know what? Up. I started going crazy. I started making these little guitars. Right. Because I didn't have this kind of <laughs> lateral motion. But... So what I, one of my heroes was Albert Collins, a blues guy. Right. And he would hang his guitar off of this shoulder, and I found that I could play like this. Oh, wow. So, you know what? I was 95%. Nobody ever knew it, really. And, and so you, and, and to get through the pain, you start taking what, like Oxycontin? Yeah, I, st- I took a lot of shit just to get through that tour, and it lasted about six months. And I was drinking because of the pain and getting through it for, you know, profusely. And when you but, mix the drinking with the Oxycontin, that's a fucking powerful cocktail. Very powerful Nothing cocktail. Nothing better than that. Oh, and you know what? <laughs> if you ask me if I remember those months, I would say absolutely not. But, what, wow. but you know what? I was a hero. Got through the tour, and just like you know, all the other substance in my life, I figured this, I figured this one would just fall off. Right. No such luck. Yeah. No. I was very very naive to it. You know. Were you like, hey, this oxycotton is more addictive than anything ever? Anything. Like in other words, you said, hey, and now I'm done with the pain. I'll stop the oxycotton, and then when you go to stop, it it actually hurts. Shaking like a leaf, man. Wow. And I'm an asshole. I think I got like Parkinson's. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's you know never I mean? the couldn't, stuff, right? Couldn't be withdrawal. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm now, all freaking out. I don't know what's going on. So now do you have to go <laughs> score Oxycontin? Like, because now you can no longer Are get you it. Doctor no, no, no. You know. <laughs> all right. You know what I did? I just. I just uh, detoxed. I went in, I checked in, and I just uh. detoxed for like seven days, and I went right back on the road. Is it almost impossible to do it on your own? Because Oxycontin, they say, is like hillbilly heroin. It's the most powerful. Well, you know, I think you could do it, but you got to do it under the supervision because guys like our age can have it a stroke. Right. If you just cut it off. Was Limbaugh in the detox with you? <laughs> he was right next door climbing the walls, yeah. I heard a rumor that Lindsay Lohan was in rehab with you at one point. Did you bang her in rehab? <laughs> <laughs> or no interest? Uh, no. no. But I think she banged someone else and got in trouble. Oh, she got in trouble. Yeah. She get in trouble. She was hot, man. Oh, yeah? She was hot. She was hot. Yeah. And I talked did... to her for, you know, I hung with her a little bit. <laughs> but, she, but you didn't put the moves on her. No, no. She's too young. Too young for you? Yeah. What is your cutoff on age? Uh, I try to, uh, 10 years older than my daughter. Oh, good. Yeah. That's, that's, that's always got to be. Isn't that a good rule? 
That's a good rule. That's I think it's always happened. I have to, to throw be. some back. And speaking of your daughter, she's got some huge career going in modeling, right? You know what? Actually, she just acted in her first movie. Right. Uh, this is 40 with Judd Apatow and Megan Fox. And, and how did that go? And she killed it. You saw the movie. I haven't seen it yet, but right. I talked to those guys. She killed it. So she has a and career. And it was improv. I was like, really? and she's 14 and a half. She's only 14? 14 and a half. Oh, I thought she she was looks old. like she's 20. Wait till I show you a picture. Wow. wow. She's doing really, really great. I think Does she's she about like to Heather? sign with... Hmm? Does she look like Heather, her mom? Yeah, she definitely looks yeah, like That's a good look. Yeah. That's a very good I'm look. I'm in trouble, man. She has my gregarious personality. Yeah. And Heather's a good look. So. Oh, oh, that's, boy. That's, uh, that's, that's awful. That's a bad combination. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, uh, how are you going to keep that kid in line? I guess you can. You know what? All you can do is equip equip, equip them with the, the tools to take care of themselves. Because you know when the minute they're out of your sight, they're acting up. And, and so, uh, so now, so now you're clean and sober. Took you a couple of trips to rehab, right? Because when you get out, all of a sudden that oxycontin starts calling to you again. <laughs> the drinking, right? No, you know what? That never even came back into play. I forgot about it very quickly. Just actually. drinking. Yeah, there's a drinking thing that. Did you think that you could take a couple of drinks and then deal with it? Of like course, that? you're gonna try it. You always try that, and it don't work. It doesn't work. No, it, it always it increases. It never decreases. It, uh, you know what? It just doesn't work, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. just doesn't work. So, you well, know, i, I got to be honest with you. You know, I'm, like, healthier than terrible? I've been in my life. You look really good. You do. Thank I you, say, You don't deserve to look this good with all the <laughs> shit you've been doing. <laughs> hey, we don't look good. He said he took his first guitar lesson at 52. I was like, well, how old are you? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, that keeps you young, too. That's right. Anytime you learn something new and evolving like that, man, that just, you know, just keeps you young. Yeah, it does. So, so uh, you're feeling good about a new record. And you're clean and sober, which is uh, Is he a awesome. teetotaler? He doesn't do anything. You, you don't do anything now. Like if, no, I go, if I go to dinner with you, are you ordering a club soda? I'm doing like Perrier and lime, you know, oh, uh, non-alcoholic beer. Oh, come on. Wait, That's you, awful. You'll have a few. We'll go <laughs> hey, you know, I was listening to your show the other day about the Jewish men and they got to start drinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll go out to dinner. You could have a few glasses of wine. It'll be fine. <laughs> Imagine that. I would not want to be with you if you started drinking again. Everyone would blame me. No, you know what? And I was kind of a happy drunk anyway. Right. I just started to, you know, my life choices at that point were starting to get kind of blurred. So you think you're capable of never having another drink? Oh, absolutely. That's it. Yeah. It's done. I, you, Howard, it's I drank done. enough for about 100 guys. And did John ever come to you and say, listen, you got to stop drinking? Yeah. He, he laid that on you. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I had a lot of support. Did you tell him to fuck off? No. You didn't? No. No, I knew. I Listen, I kind of knew I needed to dry out. Wow. You know, and I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know if it was going to be forever, you know, but right. I knew I needed to just kind of just. Yeah, my good for you. Me. So you're busy now. Are you worth $65 million personally? That's the figure I read on the Internet, that you have $65 million. Take a, take a, uh, take a you know, give or take a few shekels. That's nice, isn't it? That's really good. But wait a minute. In the divorce, you don't lose a lot of money? Hey, did Heather take you for a lot of money when you uh, got divorced, or did you have a prenup? As prenuptial. Like, prenuptial. <laughs> so you're safe. Thank God. Well, listen, Heather's got a lot of money. She's got her own bread, man. She's got money. You know, I mean, you know, I was always drawn to, uh, you know, a lot of high-profile women, I think, because I, I think I really connect with people that are in the business, and they understand what I do, and I understand what they do. Right. And, uh, you know, that was that was one of those things. So are you making a statement now that you mostly bang people in the business, like like high-profile bro, <laughs> right? Not anymore. <laughs> is that true? Is that, like, now you're... No, not... no, no, no. You know, hey, look, I'm single now, man. It's all good. Is, 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 so, are you dating anybody right now? Are you out Yeah, dating? you know, I'm kind of dabbling around. Nobody, uh, nobody that's sticking. You know, I, it's been such a busy year for me. Right. But I, I've never done two albums in one... But you're not that busy, you can't get laid. I mean, come on. Oh, you got to sneak that in there, bro. Yeah. And Denise, he's not sticking with one. When Denise Richards came in here and she talks about you, she says you are a great lover. I mean, she was very highly complimentary. <laughs> like, like, you really gave it to her. And that is a sexy woman. I oh, she ain't so bad herself, yeah. That's what I'm saying. She is a sexy fucking woman. Yes, she is. She always has been. You know, oh, it's, my it, God. It's, it's very insatiable. And she's a good girl. She she's a good woman. She admits it. She says, I have to fuck like crazy. You know, she loves it. She loves to fuck. I mean, guys, what are we talking about here? Hey, is she nothing the, wrong with that, man. Is she the sexiest woman you've ever been with? Got to be up there. Wow. It's got to be up there. So, so you guys got back together again, and now you recently broke up again. Mm -hmm, yeah. What, 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 what happened? Well, you know, I think that we were basically going in different directions, unfortunately. Like I said, this has been the busiest time of my life uh, between doing my record, writing and recording and all that stuff for the Bon Jovi record, and right. being a single dad. 
You know, how does that work for you being a single dad? I, I mean, love it so much. You do, but 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 doesn't the kids? You, don't the kids usually kind of go off with the mother more? It's like it's hard for you to. No, see. you know, her and I have a very very great relationship. I you know I don't know what happened to you when you got divorced from your kids, but right. when I got divorced. My relationship with my little girl got better. Right. You know, because, I mean, the time that she was spending with me, she was spending with me. Right. And you got to do stuff on your own. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's a picture of the two of you guys. Look at that. Very nice. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, look at you. And so, and so you say things got better. And are you still friends with Heather? Like, can you go over there? I, I read that you actually go over there and have Thanksgiving and all these holidays. Absolutely. With you can. Oh, yeah. No, we just, uh, uh, you know, at first it was, uh, you know, anytime you get divorced at first, there always there's that, you know, kind of period where you're like, you don't like each other. Right. You know, because you're fighting about finances and this and that and the other thing. Blah, right. blah, 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 blah. Who's so going to pay for this and who's going to pay little for hangover that? on that thing goes on, you right. know. Right. But, uh, no, Heather and I, you know, knock on wood, are, are really great friends now. I don't care. Uh, Ava and Heather and I went to a wedding together about three weeks ago. That's fantastic. You know, we text each other. Heather's working again. What She's doing really doing? well. Actually, she texted me yesterday, and she's doing a, um, a thing on Scary Movie 5. Oh, no kidding. Where she plays the mom of the Black Swan, and it's funny as shit. Funny. I, I, have you ever gotten to the point post-divorce that you've had sex with Heather again since the divorce? Would you ever? Would the two of you ever go back there once <laughs> no, in a while? I don't just, think so. You don't think so? No. It can't happen. Can't I don't think so. Line, huh? We can't cross Too much that water line. under the bridge, baby. <laughs> Too much. Yeah. Like, it's never been a night you're all hanging out. It feels good. Your daughter's you know, hanging out. The kid goes to sleep or goes you out with a friend. You forget you're not And all of a sudden, you go, you know what? What the fuck? You know what? <laughs> Let's it, it, just go to bed. You're Heather Locklear. I'm Richie Sambora. Why not? Why not? Let's I can't say the thought hasn't crossed my mind. Right. Why not? But no, you know what? I think, you know, you got to leave what's in the past in the past and you know, you don't want to start churning uh, up that thing again, man. I heard what came between you and Denise, between you and Denise, was that she was still in touch with Charlie Sheen. And Charlie's a big pain in the fucking ass. And you had said, look, man, I can't be with the chick if she's going to know, you know, hang out with Charlie because it's too fucking crazy, that whole scene. Nah. True or false? False. Really? You Absolutely know Charlie false. at all? Absolutely. Charlie and I are friends, man. Oh, you are? And we've always been friends. Me and him used to hang out in the old days when we both were crazy. Right, right. right. Oh, you did? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You can man, hang Yeah, he Charlie scared Z. the hell out of me, man. I used <laughs> I to have to leave say. sometimes. You weren't, you weren't that crazy. I, I wasn't as crazy as him. Yeah. yeah, he's crazy. Yeah, but you know what? He's a really good guy in a good way. Right. You know what I mean? If you hang out with him... He's a real man's man. You talk about sports, you right. know, you hang out. Were you ever in, in the home when he has all these women and the, the, the parties the and the goddesses. hookers and the goddesses? You know, I never was. I always used to go out with him. I would, like, right. meet him somewhere. We'd go to some parties, you know, go out to dinner, things like oh, that. And you two must have been up to fucking shenanigans. Oh, it was huh? fantastic. Unbelievable. <laughs> like the kind of shenanigans we did, you know, in the old days, too. Yeah, well. Me and I you. Mean, not, I never had shenanigans <laughs> like that. I mean, you know, I, what did I do? <laughs> Nothing. Now, and we did the, you know. Now let's uh, let's see. Uh, the the new single is "Every Road Leads Home to You." Before you play the single, I know you're going to do that today. Would you do a an old Bon Jovi song? Sure, you would do one. Now, do, 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 let me introduce your band here. Uh, the band is uh, Luke is on hand percussion. That's something I'm getting into. Hand percussion. <laughs> you're taking lessons. Yeah, yeah. How is that? What are you playing over there? I don't see so well anymore. Yeah, what is that? Like a bongo? Uh, it's called a cajon. A cajon, and it's kind of like a little mini drum kit. Let me let me hear a little of that. I can probably play that, I think. Was that? I think I can probably play probably. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. do wipeout. It's easy. I can play it. Yeah, you can do that yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 I got that. Okay, so you got Luke. You got Kurt on bass over there. How you doing, Kurt? Right. You like this new band? Love it. What is it, the Flaming Rabbis or the Dirty Rabbis? <laughs> <laughs> it changes every day. That's right. We're going to try changing every day, John. And uh, uh, Pete on guitar, right? Peter Peter Stroud. How's it going? Hey, hey now, what's happening? <laughs> and uh, well. and Matt Rawlings on the keyboards back there. Okay, yeah. so this is uh, Richie's band. Now, d does John get upset when you sing a uh, a song like uh, any Bon Jovi song? Does he get upset by No, him? not at all, because we wrote them together. Right. You know, they're just as much my songs as, as his. Did you primarily write the music and he wrote the lyrics? No, no, we do both. You do both? Yeah, yeah. I'm a lyricist and a musician, yeah. Right. Okay. And the music, the music guy. Right. Always so happen. When you write with John, it's the same thing. You just do Same it. thing. But it, the difference is, is that, you know, when I write for myself, obviously, I get to cover the subject matter that I want to cover, and I'm the mouthpiece. When you, were, when you wrote uh, Living on a Prayer with John... Where are you? What, what point in your life? How old a guy are you? Uh, 25. And Bon Jovi already had some big success, right? You guys were... No, we actually had minor success, but we were fledgling, man. We were broke. 
You were broke. Oh, yeah. We we had a platinum album. We had a gold album. But we took the band on a tour, a tour for like nine months. John and I both put up a lot of publishing money to, to do that and subsidize the whole thing. I mean... I was ma my road crew was making more money than me, man. Isn't that amazing? You already had some hits, and you were broke, and you go out on tour, and you're broke. You're broke from the tour. Everyone thinks you're an instant millionaire, and and, and kids today don't get that at all. Do yeah, they? it's not. You know, I tell you, it's expensive. You know, you take guys all around the world. You got to ship the equipment. Right. You know, you have to do a lot of work, and you stay out there for a long time. The bills add up. So when you have a, hit, a couple of sort of, as you say, uh, minor hits, uh, you go out there on tour to kind of build a following to get so, so that they'll buy the new album you're working on. And so, in a sense, the song "Living on a Prayer" it, it, it's an interesting title. It's like you were living on a prayer. What if this record didn't work out? You guys disband. It doesn't. You know, it doesn't happen. It's it, that's what it is. Absolutely. Was that what the song was about? Well, basically, you know, first time we ever used two characters in a situation. Right. Tommy and Gina. Right. And essentially, they were a metaphor. Everybody has been in that situation in their life where they're on the, you know, the balls of their ass. Right. And they're trying to make ends meet. You know, we've all been there. Were those two characters you and John, in a sense? Not that you, you were lovers, but I'm saying, was, was it that you guys were on the balls of your ass? Was I that guess what it was probably really in about? the back of our mind it was that, but I think it was more like our parents. People we've seen growing up, very blue-collar New Jersey kind of upbringing and stuff like that. Right. And then it became the world song. When you write a song like that, do you immediately know it's a hit? I did, and John didn't. Really? Yeah, yeah. He you tells the story on stage all the time. I said, you know, I said to him after we wrote it, I'm going, dude, I think that's the best song we've written so far in our career. And he's like, ah, I don't know. I don't know if it's good or not, you know. Do you think he said that because he didn't want to jinx it, maybe? I don't know. You don't know. But you knew it was a hit. Song. I knew it. Yeah, I knew it was the best thing we wrote. You know, then wanted came along. Never said goodbye. When you when you played "Living on a Prayer" for the record company, they immediately recognized it as a single. Oh, absolutely, they did, and oh, they yeah. knew it was a hit. Absolutely, right. And then was John convinced that this was going to be a hit? Yep. And when when they started playing it on the radio, was it almost immediately a huge sensation? Yeah, we first put out "You Give Love a Bad Name," and that was that huge. went to number one. Right. And uh, and then Living on a Prayer was the second single? Went to number one, too, all over the world. And, like, you know, I mean, as a as a band before that, we went to all these different countries. We were very, very smart. We seeded the world. Right. You know, so people actually knew of us. They knew that we were a good rock and roll band. We just didn't have great songs yet. Right. And it really gelled. Slipper and Wet, our third, of, uh, our third album, that's when it hit. You can't rest on your laurels either. I mean, as big a star as you guys are, now you have a new record. You've got to go out and work it like it's a first-time deal for you, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah, you've got some name recognition and all that, but people still, you still have to go out and You've got to go out and you have to have the goods. Yeah. All right, so play a little Living on Prayer, and then we'll hear something new that you're doing. All right, you want to hear right, a little here bit? Here we go, here we go.
Together. You sound good, you screaming rabbis or whatever the hell it is. <laughs> when uh, when you when you play a song like that, you always you love that two, you love the two neck guitar, right? You love that. Well, I, very few guys play that. And why do you love those two necks? What what? Uh, explain what that to me. That I'm not a guitar about? player. Yeah. Um, well, they're you know, the 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 six string. Right. It's got a different sound to it because you can play the leads. Right, and then the twelve string. Oh, that's a twelve string. Wow. It's a little more orchestral, oh. but that's the uh, that's the one it sounds. Ah. See, it, oh, it's got twelve wow. strings, so it, it has a little more resonance to it. It's like. I'm a cowboy. <laughs> It's you know, getting like, to the that. point where I can't anymore. anymore. I am dying. Stephen Stills is fantastic, right? I mean, he's underrated, right? Stephen Stills as a guitar player, don't you think? Great. He's a Talk great about guitar. an underrated guy. Unbelievable. That underrated solo album cat. he put out really showed what he could do. Oh, man, he's badass. You're a badass guitar player. Oh, I, I, you, Fred, don't you agree? I think... I think he's one of the most amazing players of all time. Yeah. I'll tell you what, man. Really you want to hear me play? I think this record that's out now, Yeah, it, I'm playing the best I've ever played in my life. Do you think Kiss is upset when they're listening this morning and they're going, <laughs> man, we should have taken... No, I think they're quite well off. Yeah. Don't you they think... got more money than me, bro. Would you say that... Like you... a lot more money. Well, yeah, because they charge... They, they build caskets. Is there ever going to be a Bon Jovi casket? I, I mean, doubt that. When, when, when you, when... I mean, I'm a whore. Right. But not that not, they are the real whores of the of the business, right? It's it's unbelievably they're they're not ashamed at all of uh, t taking every oh, dime. Oh, no, they're shameless, man. 
sometimes you have to say to yourself, hey, I'll pass up on some merchandising, right? Exactly. You have to. Think of the, the arguments you would have gotten into with those guys had you joined KISS. What a different life it would have been. Oh, yeah. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. Remarkable. Do you think you're the secret weapon in Bon Jovi because you're a lead, as you proved here, you're a lead singer, so it's really two lead singers in the band. Well, you know, I think a lot, a lot, if you look back on our records, I mean, a lot of the... Harmonies. The stuff, the harmony stuff that I did with John is basically almost like the Everly Brothers in a way. They're, they're, you know, they're, 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 they kind of go together. You and know? I don't hear harm. Like, you, you, it's funny that you went to Crosby, Stills, and Nash because I always say, how come no bands do that anymore? They don't have those harm. Like, you guys were harmonizing beautifully. Oh, we did. There. These guys are great. Yeah. yeah, that's really good. And, and does that take a long time to work out who's going to do what part? And when you. You know what? When you got great musicians like these guys, I swear to God, I mean, it's basically almost instantaneous. So when you say live in on a prayer, who decides to go up high? How do, who, who goes up we high? We just, you know, the guys kind of decide amongst themselves, and I just sit there, and you know what? It's like, here's what, like a, a little thing, but it's an amazing thing. Yeah. Like, these guys are blending their harmonies. There, there's The sound guy's not doing that. They're doing it. Because right. they're that good. I notice you back off the mic at some point. It's yeah, they're all, everybody's, you know, everybody's kind of breathing together. And that's the great thing. You know what? You could put a bunch of musicians together. Right. And it and they could be really good musicians. Right. But it doesn't mean they feel the groove at the same way. It doesn't mean that, you know, they're going to breathe and breathe with you the same way and breathe the songs while you breathe, you know. Do you, do you ever practice that without any instruments? Do you ever, that, that harmony part? Do you ever oh, do yeah, that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Do? What do does that sound like without an instrument? Just that part when you go... Well, yeah, you, you want to hear it? Yeah, let me hear that. Without, without, without yeah, any... Without, go, no, go ahead. Acapella. Yeah, let me hear that. Okay. We gotta hold on to what we got It doesn't make a difference if we make it all night Got each other and that's a lot I want to be able to do that. Why can't I do that? You know, for me, it comes out of doing fucking like when I was a kid. Yeah, that always came out. I had my neighborhood, all the guys were singers, and I would hang out on the corner doing doo -wop. Because I always loved in Bon Jovi when you're playing, and all of a sudden I, I watch you on stage, and John's doing his thing, and then all of a sudden you just you do it very sort of quietly. You go into the microphone. I love that. I want to be that guy. <laughs> Instead, I'm here. My stupid dick hey, jokes. you're doing good, brother, and you're doing it I'm well. doing I'm doing all right. Now, this new album, let's get to the new single. So this is very personal, this song to you. What song are you going to be doing for us? Um, here's a song called Every Road Leads Home, and it seems to be the impact track that everybody is kind of going towards these days. Right. But interestingly enough, you know, I, I'm... I decided to go with an independent label, okay, which is interesting because the business is changing. Obviously, you right. know, obviously, social media and downloading is really what's going on, right? And and I also wanted to make the record I wanted to make artistically, right? And you know, obviously, there's going to be a commerciality in it, but there's a lot of jamming in this. So you're getting the acoustic version of the stuff, but people are reacting to this track. Um, now, some have interpreted this track. Uh, Every road leads home. Home being Denise Richards' vagina. Oh my God! <laughs> that, that's true, Robin. Am I right, Richie, on that, or is that a, 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 a misconception? It was actually, uh, I was. It's actually me being on the road coming home to my daughter. Actually, oh, really. how yeah, boring! Yeah. I thought it was yeah. about Denise. You know, you got to tell me what she's like in bed. She's lovely. She she's talks amazing. up such a good fucking yeah. story here. What are you gonna I mean, do, man? I mean, I mean, you know, she's hot, and she's a freak. She she describes. Oh, she's blowing. Every, you know, she she describes the whole thing. It's she hey, loves look, anal. She loves anal. She. Talks me. I just work here. I know. Do you? Are you into anal? I mean, giving it. Uh. All, right. All right. So this song that Richie's oh going to do. Giving. Giving, of course. Yes. All right. It hurts when they receive. Oh, my God. Right. I mean, if you would write a song about how you manage to last when you're in bed with Denise Richards and I blow off right in two seconds, I would listen to that song. That's another song you should write. All right. Listen, okay. Richie. Richie, so this song. Next time before I write a song, Howard, I'm going to consult you first. Please do. Every Road uh, Leads Home to You, Richie's new album, After of the lowdown featuring the single Every Road Leads Home to You is in stores tomorrow. That's uh, going to be happening. Yeah, the digital date is tomorrow. In October, you'll be able to, first week of October, you'll be picking up the stores. And tickets for Richie's October tour dates with the Screaming Rabbis is in Philadelphia and New York. They're on sale now at richiesambora.com. That's right. That's where it all happens. Richiesambora.com. All, all right, so here's the song. Let's listen and see if we can understand what Richie's trying to say to us in this song. Yeah, no problem. It's called. Uh, Every road leads home to you. All right, All right. Just... here we go. Your picture 
I'm lying here alone Restless in a far away bed The stars are falling down And I'm half a world away Just trying to close the distance Feel each breath that you take And the bridge is burning and I'm losing my faith I'm trying to find my way I love that. Beautiful song. Thought that was beautiful. Beautiful. I know. Right? Pretty good song. Hey? Real good I song. I liked it. I'm telling you, man. Thank you, Robin. I loved Thank it. You, I loved Howard. it. Did you play that for your daughter? Oh, yeah. And did you say, honey, this is about you, or you just don't say Absolutely. anything? She loved it. She loved it. That's a beautiful thing for a father to write yeah. to his daughter, especially yeah. a divorced father, because Heather can't write a song for her. And you say, look, <laughs> daddy's better than mommy, Guess right? Not. Well, you know, hey, there's that, you know, there's the thing between a father and a daughter, man. It's right. Just, it's very that, special. That, just a little deeper, right? Yeah, that's great. I tell you. But you know what? The thing about the song... I mean, what does Heather do? Heather goes out and buys her a sweater. You write a song for her. You know what I'm saying? That's, I love that right. song. I uh, love the it. The thing about the song, you know, it's like... This whole album is interesting, you know? Because I, I write stuff about me and what's happening in my life. Right. And I realize that it's everybody's stuff. That's it's actually right. universal. I mean, I think I've always been good about that. And I've always been good like that. I mean, even living on a prayer. 
Right. Like I said, you know, it kind of was about, about us struggling, right. doing our thing, getting out of New Jersey and trying to make ends meet. But it became everybody's song. And I think that uh, uh, a lot of this record, I think people are going to relate to a lot because there's, you... a, there's, there's, it's an authentic human record. And it's got a lot of fire to it. And if you listen to the lyrics, I think they're good stories. Is there anybody you like out there now? Any young kids coming up? Or are you just totally disillusioned with them? Man, you know, no, no, no. I, You know, being from an independent label, man, I listen to a lot of new stuff that's really obscure, like in Silver Sun Pickups and Fits in the Tantrums. And And My Morning Jacket is really good, I was listening to. You still walk around, you put on headphones and listen to music and, and try to sort of see what everyone's up to. Oh, you know, I am a... Avid record buyer. I buy at least three records a week. Who's your favorite guitar player? Who's your hero guitar wise? I had a bunch, man. I had, you know, Jimmy Page, Jimi Hendrix. Right. All the classics. Uh, Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton, who played on my first solo album. That's right. You know? Yeah. That's and pretty amazing. Jimmy has, right? came, Jimmy has come up and I became like friends with my heroes, man. I hang out with Jimmy Page now. It's like. Uh, do you? Cool. Where do you hang out at? It's Castle? In, no, in London, man. He's got an apartment in London. And you hang out. Do, What's do you, that like? Are you like? Are you uh, tongue tied around this guy? Like, I mean, I, you know, he makes it so you're not. He's such a gent. Do you go over there and play guitars, or do you sometimes? Just... Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say he, he actually about? come. To, he came up and jam with me a couple times, and I'm actually gonna come ask him if he wants to come to London and play. Does he have 3D TV? <laughs> he must, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, we do when we hang out. Yeah, what do you do? Because I... we go to concerts, right, and go out to dinner. Just the two of us. And do people freak out when you guys show it's up? It's kind of cool, man. Chicks are flying around. I'll tell you that. Is he still getting laid? I mean, is he doing his thing? Definitely. He definitely. Yeah, man. Good he's a stud. He he looks great. He's feeling great. Jimmy um, Page, man. Look at you hanging I know, out isn't with that this heavy? guy. I, you know, I never think who the hell does Jimmy Page hang out with. I never knew it was that you. with Richie. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm not good at hanging out with people. You were good at hanging out with me when we were living. Yeah, when I was living but in we New never York. hung we out. Had a good time. Like, we, we take me over to Jimmy Page's apartment. Let's see what goes down. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fuck we with that guy. Listen to music, play a little guitar. You know what I mean? Just, just you know, that's, it's, it's well, just what are you going to do while they're listening to music and play guitar? I'm get one of those drums. You, what was that called again? <laughs> cajon. A cajon. I'm going to get a cajon okay. now. <laughs> okay. I love that. It sounded great, by the way. You guys sound great together. Look, I could talk to you all day, but. Uh, I'll let you out of here. Richie Sambora's new album, Aftermath of the Lowdown. I don't know what that means. I don't, it doesn't matter. Really. You want me to tell you? What does it mean? Okay. When you give somebody the lowdown, that's yeah. like giving somebody the truth. Yeah. And that's kind of like what I did on this record about my life and what was going on. There's always an aftermath. It may be good. It may be bad. All right. Now I understand. Now you understand? Sort of. Um, the single is Every Road Leads Home to You, which uh, the boys just played. It's in stores tomorrow. And tickets for Richie's October tour dates in Philly and New York are on sale now at richiesambora.com. So good to have you guys here today. Brother. Thank you for playing. And, Richie, great seeing you. I've known you so many years, and I'm very happy Too for many you. years. Yeah. It won't be so long again, Howard. All right, good. Don't don't be a stranger. <laughs> That's right. It's been a long time. Next yeah, time right. I see you, be at uh, Jimmy Page's place. We're all going over there for the big <laughs> yeah, party. Yeah. Hey, why don't you guys put me on America Got Talent? I'd love to play. They uh, Would you? Yeah. The fucking it's show's over, over but next, yeah, next season. Bad, man. Said <laughs> <over>. <laughs> Green Day had a bunch of cool people on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where were you? Who knew? I don't know. Where was I? Do you ever go over John's house for those Obama get togethers or those uh, fundraisers? <laughs> I haven't been yet. No. Without <laughs> Gore? <all laughs> I haven't time. been over there. You haven't gotten political <laughs> I yet? Well, you know, I, I campaigned for Clinton. Yeah. And I campaigned for Al. Right. And, uh,. You know, John's got the Obama thing kind of locked up. When he wants me to play, I'll probably go. Right, right. You'll be there. Absolutely. All right. Listen, uh, boys, thank you for doing this today. Very special morning because of uh, your music. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll be back right after these words. Jesse Ventura. Uh, right, Governor huh? Jesse Ventura. Thank you, Howard. You're the best, brother. All right. Thanks, man. You too. Thanks, guys. Fun with Ronnie the Limo Driver. On stage at Tootsie's Gentleman's Club.